You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. I'm joined now by James O'Connor from Green Acres. Good morning, James. You might start by telling me a bit about your own background, please. Um, I'm from Wexford. I've always lived in Wexford. I grew up in Wexford and my family were solicitors in Wexford since 1888, I think. And myself and my five brothers and sisters were brought up in Wexford and um, I've never lived anywhere else. I went to college for a few years in Dublin, but that didn't really go as expected. And I set up business in Wexford in 1984. And James, where did the idea come for you to start business? Well, the idea came by accident, really. I was hitching up to Dublin to explain myself to one of my accountancy lecturers um, on my short and, uh, I suppose, unsuccessful college career. And he had a van load of turnips that he was delivering to a fruit and veg supplier from Gorey. And I ended up going into business with him and stayed in business with him for three years until he went uh, to work for a different firm over in Kilkenny, at which stage um, we had established Greenacres in the Bullring area of Wexford in the premises that was formerly Frank O'Connor and Company's bakery shop. And at the time, what was Greenacres selling? Fruit and vegetables. And we also leased some space in the shop to Gerard Colfer. Um, but Gerard moved from the premises in 1994, at which stage we had started doing wine. In those days, the likes of Jacob's Creek from Australia was a new product in Ireland, and the Irish, I suppose, population really hadn't embraced wine as as a popular drink. Uh, But that's all changed now, as we know. Where did the inspiration for selling wine come at such an early point? Just as as an extension to the fruit baskets that we used to sell at Christmas, we decided to do fruit and also to add chocolates and start adding wine. And we were encouraged by the um, drinks uh, companies in in those days that there really wasn't a fine wine shop in Wexford. Um, There hadn't been since Stones of South Main Street had closed a number of years before that. After selling wine, tell me, what was the next development for Green Acres after that? The next development was a small coffee shop that we opened at the back of our former premises on the Bullring. We opened a small coffee shop in 1997 and then in 1999 we started selling um, art in a small way on the walls of the coffee shop. The first exhibition that we had was an exhibition that um, we used the paintings painted by my sister Mary who's uh, an artist. She's based in Kazakhstan now and uh, she's successfully teaching art. That was our first exhibition and that took place in approximately 1999. In 2001, Carl, what, what I suppose a major change to our business was that at that stage we were acting as a wholesale distributor of fruit and vegetables to hotels, restaurants, various different retail outlets where we used to travel to the Dublin markets on a daily basis, leaving Wexford at 3 o'clock in the morning, getting to Dublin at 5 o'clock. And in in, in those days, um, the trip wasn't as easy as it is now because the Bray Bypass, the Arkla Bypass, those, those kind of roads weren't done in Ireland at that stage. But in 2001... We were advised by the local Bank of Ireland manager, uh, Mr. Liam Hayes. He gave us tremendous advice at the time that um, he thought that we weren't concentrating on our strengths. He told us that, in his opinion, that our shop was our strength rather than our wholesale business. He said that there were other larger companies who were well equipped to do wholesale and our strength was really to concentrate on our premises on the main street. So subsequent to that, in 2001, we refurbished the area where we had our cold storage and we equipped that as a 1500 square feet um or 1500 square foot art gallery and that at at that stage um made us a destination and opened us up to a whole new audience particularly around Wexford Festival Opera time in 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 terms of the quality of the art exhibition that we used to show at that time every year. And I know, James, that the next big development for the business following that was your move to Selskar. Tell me about how that came about. 
I suppose it, it was driven by the fact that some of the more popular and well-known high street retailers were looking at Wexford as an opportunity for their business. And uh, we were lucky enough, I suppose, to be approached. And they um, wanted to take our premises and they offered us a long-term lease on our premises. Uh, we looked at the opportunity for Green Acres. Would it transfer? Would it move to another um, location. Myself and my architect looked at different buildings both in Ireland and abroad and took the best of what we saw to come up with a design that we put in place in 2006. I know that the development and the redevelopment of your premises in Selsker was completed almost in line when the recession started. How did that impact your business at the time? From a stage where every retailer in the country wanted to come into Wexford, um, suddenly you had a situation that costs were going up, retail sales were falling. Wexford probably didn't suffer as, as badly as some towns and cities across the country, but we had to adapt our business uh, dramatically. In 2008, we opened our bistro, so that replaced turnover that we had lost from the point of view of our art sales because with the slowdown in the economy, people weren't buying houses, buildings weren't being built. The major businesses around the country were looking at cost cutting rather than expanding their costs and in terms of their art collections and investing in art and sculpture these kind of things went out the window so we had to look at what we were going to do to replace that turnover the bistro came in at a very opportune time how important has online trade been for your business over the last number of years it represents 20 to 25 percent of our sales at the moment we would hope that with the um, onset of our new website which should be up and running by the end of August and we're very hopeful that the, that will drive our online sales up to a higher level. We've been very careful to invest in the latest in IT. We have uh, fibre optic broadband in the premises. We have completely renewed our computer system and our point of sale system in the last nine months. And I think if you if you invest in your business and keep your business up to sufficient quality, I think there is a reasonable chance of survival in the present economy. How important is the Wexford Opera Festival to Green Acres? It's of huge importance, I, I, I would say, and I'm not, being, I'm not being unrealistic here. I think that Green Acres wouldn't be in Wexford if it wasn't for Wexford Festival Opera. Our annual turnover between the first weekend of Wexford Festival Opera and the end of December represents nearly 50% of our annual turnover. It's absolutely huge. The fact that a town of Wexford size can attract an international audience of the type and the quality that it does every October and November I think is absolutely magnificent for the town. Are we capitalising on it fully? We're probably not but Huge work has been done in the town to increase the the fringe event, for example, the fringe event, um, the, the, the potential to grow the fringe event, the potential to grow the opera festival to a new and a younger audience is there. It's a matter of everybody joining together and working together to move Wexford on to higher levels than it is at the moment. But the work has been done and the certainly the expertise of the people running the festival is fantastic. Tell me about the current retail climate in Wexford Town. Retail climate in Wexford is no different than anywhere else in the country. It is struggling, but we have a very vibrant um, community in Wexford. We've got a top-class retail group. We have a great group run by Anne, Mary and Helen, who are in charge of the Wexford and Bloom. And I think we can see the fruit of their, of their labour at the moment uh, with the Wexford and Bloom Festival. The retail group came together during the snow of 2010, whether, when it was a case of everybody getting out and tidying the streets and taking responsibility for the town because the local authorities didn't have the manpower to deal with what was a huge problem in Wexford and working with the local authority and the retailers I think we made better efforts than anywhere else in the country to get our town ready for business and the business community and also the people of Wexford responded to our Wexfords because uh, responded to our efforts 
because from what was a really grim situation, Wexford didn't fare too badly in 2010 during the Christmas and during the snow. You mentioned that Wexford has a very active retailers association. What's on the agenda currently for that retailers association? Um, well, the Summer Santa Barbecue took place last Thursday evening and it was a tremendous success. Um, this goes towards making sure that the lights, the Christmas lights are up to scratch. Uh, the new system that was put in last year was very well received. The Winter Wonderland that took place in Wexford's bouldering area was tremendously successful and this was done with a huge cooperation and sponsorship from local business people around Wexford. The businesses who have contributed to this know who they are and we're extremely um, grateful for their support but we need more support from the other business community in Wexford and the other retailers. Everybody should be supporting these kind of initiatives in Wexford. I know that you're also part of a tourism group uh, brought about by Fall to Ireland. Tell me the remit of the group itself. To get people to Wexford. Um, Fall to Ireland under the stewardship of Tara Kerry um, in, in, in this area um, meet regularly with the hotel owners, the guest house owners, the local authorities, the Chamber of Commerce and really it's about realising the potential in Wexford. It's little things, it's been proud of your town, it's buying into your town. If you're living and working in Wexford, maybe you should have an input into um, the, the running of Wexford. There, there, there are more sports clubs, more art clubs, more culture clubs, more music clubs, um, business associations in Wexford than probably any town of a similar size in, in Ireland. And people, if they're living and working in Wexford. They should buy into Wexford because it's a wonderful place to live, a wonderful place to retire to. Um, I think this is evidenced by the fact that there's a waiting list to become a volunteer worker in Wexford Opera Festival. Um, these people love coming to work and to take part in what I think is the best town in the country. What do you think are the big challenges facing retailers out there today? The challenges in running a business, basically, how do you market your business successfully? How do you deal with the regulation that is put in place? Um, we, we all need regulation. Uh, I think maybe Ireland, some of Ireland's problems are, at the moment are that some regulations weren't complied with. But nonetheless, when you think about the long list of things that are not so much put in our way, but um, have to be dealt with to run businesses in terms of taxes, HSC, PRSI, VAT, customs and excise, fire regulations, local authorities, rates, and on and on and on. But what we have to do is roll up our sleeves, put our heads down, and start taking responsibility for ourselves and stop blaming other people. We need to do these things for ourselves, and we need to concentrate on our on our health and keeping the place looking well, keeping ourselves healthy and I suppose people should buy into um, the feeling that you don't get something for nothing, you shouldn't expect things for nothing, you should work for things and be satisfied and proud when you achieve things. What are your thoughts on local authority rates? Wexford local authority um, have a situation that they have to deal with the rate valuation in the country. The rates valuation in the country is unfair. It needs to be repealed. Um, it's not up to Wexford Local Authority to repeal this. It is up to the business community to fight very hard uh, with business bodies such as the Chambers of Commerce of Ireland, ISME, the Small Businesses Associations. Um, rates do need to be uh, paid. I'm a firm believer in that if you are part of a business and you are, are being allowed to trade in town centres or ta the outskirts of towns, that something does need to be paid, but it needs to be dealt with on a more equitable basis. And at the moment, I do not think that the rates in the country are being calculated correctly. What are your thoughts on the current banking crisis? Well, the banks probably jumped on the bandwagon uh, when times are good and now they have to cut their costs. In certain circumstances we have found the banks have been hugely supportive of our business. 
Um, but they need to get money flowing and go back to old-fashioned banking. We got very, very good advice from the banks over the years. Um, but in the middle of the Celtic Tiger um, process in Ireland, I think the banks were sacrificing um, proper business for profit. I noticed there's lots of people out there today across County Wexford that may be considering setting up a retail business. Now, James, you have over 30 years' experience in this area. What advice would you offer anyone today considering starting up a retail business for the first time? At any time in, in, in our past and in our history, when things are a bit depressed, um, the opportunity out there to set up a new business is greatly improved because the cost factor is not as great as it is when there's a boom period. So if people um, have a good idea, it's a great time to invest in your business or start a new business at the moment. And do you think that Wexford is a good place to start a business? If you can get a, a if you can get a, a suitable premises, I think uh, it's shown by the uh, new businesses that have arrived in Wexford in the last few years. They saw Wexford as an opportunity, um, a lifestyle choice. Um, I suppose maybe a destination that people would be happy living in Wexford as well as working in Wexford. And in terms of the occupation, uh, sorry, the occupancy in, in, in and around Wexford town, as soon as businesses are closing down, uh, the premises are vacant for very, very short times and new businesses are opening up. What do you think that Wexford has going for it from a business perspective? Normally, we would say um, it's a good place to live. It has um, various different business associations. The Chamber of Commerce in Wexford is very, very strong. The recent Business Achievement Awards um, was an absolutely fantastic night. And the profile of the businesses, the young people who were up at that particular event, was really, really encouraging from the point of view of attracting a younger business community to Wexford. That's that's very important. I could I could say that it's a great place to live in terms of weather, but we're not seeing the evidence of that at the moment. And just on the on the whole area of age and younger people and business across County of Wexford today, emigration is a major issue across the country. What are your thoughts on immigration? Is it good or bad? Well, there was always emigration. Irish people always from the eighteen hundreds Irish people always emigrated. Um I grew up with um, five brothers and sisters uh, in Wexford. Four of my brothers and sisters emigrated to work because in the mid-80s there was very little work in, in Wexford in Ireland. Um, so I don't see anything wrong with emigration as long as these people come back and establish something in Ireland and don't forget their Irishness. That's, that's hugely important. Uh, my descendants go back to Edward Roach in the 1798 rebellion. Um, I love Wexford, I love Wexford people and I think Wexford is an absolutely super place to live. I know you have a family yourself James, have you ever considered succession planning? I think succession planning is, is, is different than it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago when people were expected to follow their parents into business. I'm delighted my, 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 my own kids, James, Patrick and Louise, play a very active part in the running of Green Acres at the moment. Patrick helps with the baking, James helps in the bistro and Louise helps in the shop. Um, but in terms of do you expect your kids to go into the business after you, I'm, I'm not sure it's uh, it's as, as critically important as it was at one stage because there's so much opportunity out there. It would be great if our kids stayed and worked in Wexford, but we wouldn't expect it. We would, we, 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 we would certainly expect them to follow their dreams wherever that takes them. I know that Green Acres itself as a business has evolved enormously over the years. What's the future plan? future plan is to build on our, our, our success um, together with Donald Morris here who's been working with me in Green Acres for over 20 years uh, from, the, from the, the chefs up to the retail staff and uh, everybody has their own um, areas of um, responsibility down to H Helen who, who is responsible for the flowers outside. We're delighted we, we won the overall prize in the Wexford and Bloom shop fronts last weekend and uh, together with all the, all, all the staff um, as long as we're, develop or as long as we're de delivering quality of service I think that's the most important thing. Well James it's certainly been a very insightful interview. 
I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for dropping by this morning and wish you continued success with Green Acres. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.